Good morning to you and to those of you who accompanied us a little earlier starting today every day at 9 a.m. We start our conference giving our condolences to the families, the relatives of two people who unfortunately died yesterday. One is a 59-year-old uh, female patient from Havana's Plaza de la Revolución municipality with a history of uh, bronchial asthma and obesity who was hospitalized for 23 days. Uh, she's one of the patients that we consider uh, critical and reported as critical at one point. And after 10 days uh, of intensive care, Yesterday, she presented a number of complications that, despite uh, the treatment and the efforts of our specialists, it was not possible to revive her from a cardiorespiratory arrest that ended her life. I reiterate our condolences. The other person who unfortunately died yesterday is an 87-year-old male Cuban citizen from the city of Holguin with a history of high blood pressure, ischemic heart disease, a fractured hip, had a very rapid evolution and spent three days in intensive care and despite all the efforts uh, the complications that he presented as, uh, did not make it possible uh, uh, to save him after all the efforts that were made. And we reiterate, he had a rapid evolution and complications that led to his death yesterday. Now let's turn to the situation in our country. In Cuba, there are many changes in the number of foreign foreigners and, and immigrants who remain, a total of 11,206. Cuba's residing abroad, 6,704, and foreigners, 4,000. 502. In rental houses, there aren't changes either. There are 944 in Santiago de Cuba, in Centro Habana, Plaza, and Playa municipalities in the city of Havana, with the highest number of guests. Yesterday, until midnight, we had 2,792 patients admitted to our hospitals. In surveillance, 51, suspects 1,963, confirmed cases 778, total of uh, 3,796 people are monitored in the primary health care system. Yesterday, our laboratories studied 2,097 samples to detect the SARS-CoV-2 virus and COVID-19 disease. The IPK laboratory had the largest numbers with 1,089. The laboratory of the Molecular Biology Center of Villa Clara, 345. In Santiago de Cuba, 279. In Havana, 188. In the laboratory of the Hospital Brothers and Mejeras, 139. And in the laboratory of the Civil Defense, 57 samples. As a result of the study of these 2,097 samples, 74 turn out positive. That is 3.5%, a higher figure than the one that we had in previous days. The country has already accumulated a total of uh, 51,506 samples uh, studied and 1,611 have tested positive. That is, 3.1% uh, 3 of the samples studied have 
tested positive in our country. The 74 new confirmed cases are Cuban. 70 or 94.6 percent of our contacts of cases that had been diagnosed previously. Thus, a total of 1,384 of the 1,611 cases have been accumulated, 85.9 percent of which are related to a case that has been confirmed previously. In four of the newly diagnosed cases, 5.4 percent did not specify the source of infection could not be specified and probably later on, on investigation it will be identified. In fact, the cumulative number of cases in which the source of infection has not been confirmed is 61, despite the fact that we have already more than 150 cases in this situation. Of the 74 cases confirmed yesterday, 65 are male, 87.8%. And in the accumulated number, there's a similarity between the male and female sexes. In fact, the total number of confirmed male cases in our country is of 51.7%, that is 833 cases. Nine of the diagnosed cases are female, which accumulates 778 female persons who have been detected with the disease in our country. Therefore, there is a discrete predominance in the male sex. 87.88%, that is 65 of the 74 confirmed cases were asymptomatic. They had no symptoms of the disease. Evaluating the behavior of all the cases, in our country, 45.8% of all the cases have been confirmed asymptomatic at the time of the study of the samples. It must be said that by provinces, the province with most cases was Havana, which accumulated the 86.5% of the total number of the confirmed cases yesterday. Havana had uh, 64 cases. They are concentrated in the municipality of Cotorro with 58 case, cases as a result of a local transmission event in the center of this municipality. Four in central Havana and one in San Miguel and one in the municipality of El Cerro. By age groups, the most affected are the one from 50, 40 to 59 years of age that accumulate 39.1% of the confirmed cases yesterday and the group of 60 and more years that accumulates 33 cases with 44.5% of the confirmed cases yesterday. Of the 1,611 patients diagnosed with the disease in our country, 767 have a stable clinical course. This represents 98.6% of the active cases that have been diagnosed in our country. We regret the death of 66 people, counting the two that we informed uh, today, and that gives us a lethality of 4.1 percent. We had the two that were evacuated at the beginning of the, of the epidemic, and 765 discharges have already been accumulated, 51 of them yesterday, which represents 98.3 percent of the active cases in our country. Today there are two fewer critical cases reported, that is a total of four in critical condition and seven in serious condition, three more than yesterday. From the international point of view, we have to report the official data that is uh, provided by the World Health Organization 
which que, we consider um, and, and we guide ourselves considering the official statistics. And following that information until last night at, at 12 midnight, there were 183 countries with cases of COVID-19 with an accumulated number of 3,214,256 confirmed cases, 83,456 in one day, 232,570 deaths, 5,519 in one day, and that gives a lethality of 7.24%. The region of the Americas, no less than the rest of the world, records 1,339,450 confirmed cases, 45,933 in one day. 41.67% of the total number of reported cases in the world are in the region of the Americas. And it has a cumulative death toll of 77,578, 2,987 in yesterday, for a lethality of 5.79%. It must be said that uh, our country's lethality, which I refer to as a 4.1, there is a group of countries that have a lethality, 13 countries that have a lethality above the average in the region of the Americas. In the Americas, the fatality rate is of 5.79. However, there are 13 countries that are above, as we said yesterday, and the most significant are Nicaragua with 1429, Suriname with 10, Antigua and Barbuda with 12.52, Guyana with 10.98, United States with 5.89, Brazil with 6.91, Canada with 5.98, Mexico with 9.67, Honduras with 9.3, among those with greater lethality in the region. And this is all we had in terms of the national and international update on the new coronavirus.